Hey guys, welcome to your introduction on similar triangles. So we've talked already and reviewed about what congruent triangles are, and we found out that congruent triangles are in fact the same. They have the same shape and the same size. Similar triangles are different in that they have the same shape, so they still look like the same kind of triangle, but they are different sizes. So one will be either bigger or smaller than the other triangle. So similar triangles, we have angles that are all equal. So the three angles in the one triangle will, will be the same as the three angles in the other triangle. This is the same thing that happened with congruent triangles, but the thing that is different is that their sides are not equal in length. But what will happen is that they will be bigger or smaller by the same factor. So for example, if you double one side in your triangle, you'd have to double all sides in your triangle, and then it would be similar. So to prove that with a triangle, we can show that the ratios of the corresponding or matching sides are equal to each other. So we're just going to go through a couple of examples of triangles that are similar and show which angles match up and how to set up the ratio of the corresponding sides. So for this first example, they tell us that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So when they give you this similarity statement, they're telling you some really important information. Because it's already stated, the order that the letters go in is actually really important. First triangle ABC is this guy right here, ABC. When we list that second triangle, those letters have to go in order so that the first letters are corresponding angles and the second letters are also matching angles and the third letters are also matching angles. So in order to write the angles, the pairs of angles that match up, we can use that similarity statement to help us. So A is the first letter and D is the first letter. B is the second and E is the second. C is the third and F is the third. Now it does work out, this is alphabetical order, so A, B, C, and D, E, F. It doesn't always work that way, so be cautious of that and just be aware that it might not be so straightforward, okay? So that's the first part. The other thing is you could look at the diagram. It's indicated here that these two angles are the same with one swoop. This is two swoops for this guy, and then three for the final one. So for the next one, it wants us to match up the side of the original triangle with the side in the larger triangle. So my original triangle, I have this side length here, and I'm going to call that AB using the endpoints to label that side. You could call it BA, doesn't make a difference. So AB or BA. We have to find when I blew up that triangle, made it bigger, where did that side go? And that side is just this one here. So this first example is a little more straightforward because the triangles are in the same orientation. They haven't been spun around, they haven't been reflected. It's just literally make it bigger, shift it down a little bit, and we've got our second one. Then the next side length in this triangle is BC. And which one does that match up with? Well, it matches up with EF. And finally, across the bottom, I have AC, or if you prefer CA. And across the bottom, I've got DF. So we've matched up all the corresponding sides. Now, if you have a similarity statement already, which we do for this example, you can actually use your similarity statement to help you in that the first two letters, AB, match up with the first two letters, DE. And you see that's what I have here. And then you could say the last two, BC, match up with EF. And I've got that there. And then finally, we do the first and last, AC, match up with the first and last, DF. So there's a shortcut to getting those, especially when the triangles are flipped to reflected, um, it's hard, or rotated rather. It might be harder to see which one matches up with which. Okay, first one down. Here we go. So for this example, triangle BAC is similar to triangle DEC. So using that same idea, whichever letter comes first, angle B matches up with angle D. Second letter, angle A, matches up with the second letter here, which is angle E. And angle C, last one here, matches up with angle C. Now I want to look at the diagram to see what's going on and what that means. They're telling me that this angle from the lower triangle matches up with this angle from the upper triangle. This is something we know about because of these arrows. On the top and the bottom, the arrows indicate they're parallel, which tells me I can use my Z pattern, P pattern, F pattern. And in this case, I need the Z pattern, alternate angles, and I can prove that D and B are equal for that reason. That next point, 
says that A and E are equal. I, I like to demonstrate this on my diagram by labeling it as well, because it's not already labeled. So I remember what matches with what. And again, this is another Z pattern. Got our Z here, and you can see the A and E are equal because of those parallel lines. The last one, we've got C, I'll just put a little hole there, and angle C. These guys are opposite angles, so we can indicate those are the same. So when we go and try to match up those match, the corresponding sides, it's a little bit harder to know which one goes with which. But what happened here is I have this triangle, I made it a little bit bigger, and then I actually spun it around the central point, bringing it down to the bottom. So you can see if I start spinning this around from this pivot point, it's going to bring it down over to the side, and that's where it matches up. So um, to match up those corresponding sides, I would start by looking at my similarity statement and going first two letters, BA, over first two letters, DE, last two letters, over last two, and then first and last, over first and last. And then we can take a peek at the diagram and see what that means. So let me grab a highlighter here. So BA is this side here, which matches up with DE. So those two sides actually match up in our triangles. AC, along the diagonal here, matches up with EC. And then BC, so the third side, matches up with DC. So hopefully maybe you can see this a little better now in that there's that central pivot point right here. I like to call these rotated triangles where we've taken this smaller triangle We've rotated it around, so now the yellow is on the other side and the blue is over here. And that is how we have to match up our sides for these guys. Third example, these ones are nested triangles. So we have this smaller triangle, BDE, sitting inside triangle ACE, and we've got a set of parallel lines here. So we call these nested. So for this example, write your corresponding angles. So first, my first one. And first and my second. The second one matches with the second one, and the last one matches with the last one. You might have noticed when I set these up, I'm very strategic in that BDE are all um, angles in the same triangle. BDE are the three angles in the small one, and BAC are the three angles in the large one. Um, I do that on purpose just to make it really clear for me here, and it also helps me with further steps so I don't mix things up. But I've done that all the way along. These guys were all in the same triangle, and these were all in the same. If I flipped these and I said D equals angle D equals angle B, that wouldn't be incorrect, but it just might confuse me a little bit later on. Um, list all the pairs of corresponding sides. So again, first two and first two, over B D over B A, last two D E over A C, and then the first and last B E over B C. And again, you'll notice that. These are the three side lengths in one triangle, and these are the three side lengths in my other triangle. Big triangle, small triangle, doesn't matter, but you just, you have to, have to, have to have it set up like this. You can't have them flipped. So again, it's just a good habit to get into. So let's look at what all this means for this one. So here, angle B, I like to call this guy a shared angle. Okay. My small triangle and my big triangle both have angle B in it. Obviously, it has to be the same. Then I say that angle D in my small triangle equals angle A. And this comes back to our Z pattern, C pattern, F pattern again because of those parallel lines. So we have our F, the corresponding angles. And we can see the A and D here are the same. And the final one, E and C, are the same thing as F pattern on the opposite side. So these are the same because of the F pattern. And there you have it. So let's jump to the next page. Okay, so if we wanted to prove that two triangles are similar, we have a couple ways we can do that. One, we can prove it similar by showing they have two pairs of equal angles. We don't actually have to prove the third pair because of the 180 rule. 
if we know two of them are the same, that third one will always be the same no matter what we have um, because you would do the same formula to calculate each one. The other one is if we prove that all three sides, um, the ratios of the three sides are equal to one another. So in other words, if you look at this example up here, 8, if I double it, I get 16. 10, when I double, or sorry, 5 rather, when I double it, I get 10. And 11, when I double it, I get 2. So if we write the ratios of those matching sides like we did on the last page, substitute in the values and simplify, we can see that they're actually equal. So in this case, they all reduce to 1 half, and they are equal, the ratios, so that we know they're similar. And the other scenario we might run into is a side angle side similarity where we have one corresponding angle, which is a contained angle. So it's between two sides that I know are being hugged by two sides that I know. And you can also find the ratio of those two sides. Um, and that will also prove similarity. So let's look at some examples down here so you can see what I mean. So examples for each set of triangles prove that they are similar, including all equal information, the sufficiency condition, and the similarity statement. So for these guys here, I don't know any of the angles. I always try to aim for the angles first, because as long as we can prove two angles, we get it done nice and quick, and we don't have to worry about setting up these fractions. But in this case, we don't have that. So I want to prove these triangles are similar. Now, they look like they're the same, and they look like they're in the same orientation. Sometimes they might be flipped around, though. It's hard to know which side matches with which. So what you want to look at here is the biggest number, in this case 12, should match up with the biggest number in this side. And then the middle number, 10. And notice the numbers that I'm going that I'm putting on top are from the same triangle. It doesn't matter if you started with the bigger one or the smaller one. And we've got four over and here we've got two. So you'll see that these three numbers are all on top, these three numbers are on the bottom. If I reduce each fraction, 12 over 6 reduces to 2 over 5 reduces to 2, and 4 over 2 also reduces to 2. Therefore, triangle um, ABC is similar to triangle, and then AB goes along the shortest side, so the shortest side here is BE, and then BC is my longer side, so I'm going to go from E to F, the last two. So therefore, triangle ABC in the squiggly line means similar, so it is similar to triangle DEF, and the reason is because of side, side, side similarity. So example number B, number B, letter B, when we come down to this one again, I'm going to look for those angles. Do I have angles that are equal, and I have one set of angles clearly indicated that are equal, so I know that angle B is equal to angle H, but that's it. I need at least two to prove similarity. So here I need to start looking at the side lengths, and you'll notice how that angle A is inside the bend of two side lengths I know, so we call that a contained angle. That's going to come up again when we do trig as well, um, and that's what we need to have in order to use this proof here to prove that they're similar. So in this triangle, I have sides 6 and 8. In this triangle, I have sides 3 and 4. So I'm going to set up my ratios again. The bigger number on the top, or sorry, not the bigger number on the top, but I'm going to go match bigger number from one triangle to bigger number of the second triangle. And then the smaller number, 6, and the smaller number over here is 3. Reduce each, reduce each one, and I get 2 over 2. Now I just started with the bigger one because I like having whole numbers when possible. If you flip these around and you actually did the bigger number from your first triangle over the bigger number from your second triangle, the smaller number from the first over the smaller number from the second, you'll see that they actually are the same as well. But instead of getting two, we're getting one half. So instead of um, the second triangle being twice as big as the first, the first one is half the size of the second. That's all. Um, but it will still prove that it's similar. So this one, therefore, triangle, and I've got D, H, R, is similar to, now I know that H is the same as B because of those angles, so I know that that B is going to be in the middle because I put the H in the middle. If you have a different order, that's fine, but they do have to match with each other. So D, H was the smaller side, so in this triangle, uh, instead of D, H, I'm going to use N, B. 
And then that leaves me with K for my final letter. And that's because of side angle side.